Steve here with Table Rock Tea Company. As I have promised, this channel is not just about tea, it's about other things, including business, entrepreneurialism, and all of that kind of stuff. And this particular video is a very, very big idea. Now, before I get into this, well, I guess I'll just throw the bomb out there and say, I believe that I've actually solved the healthcare crisis in the United States. Pretty big, that's a pretty big claim, wouldn't you say? Um, <laughs> the immediate reaction would be, well, who are you, <laughs> right? And uh, that's fine, entrepreneurs love that. You know, basically it just adds fuel to our fire. So if you tell me we can't come up with something, I usually say, watch me. So anyway, watch me. This video, I'm gonna explain a model that I believe would actually solve the healthcare system issue in the United States. Of course, you have the one side that wants it as it is with private, you know, all of that choices, blah, blah, blah. The other side saying, hey, we need this kind of universal health care and whatever, right? Both sides seem to butt heads all the time. So um, what I want you guys to do is if you like the ideas that are presented in this video, uh, I don't really have a platform to pitch them to. I have never heard this model presented to my knowledge. Um, it's something that just um, I came up with through my diverse background. Um, not saying that that makes me any great whatever. I'm just saying I haven't heard this before. And I honestly don't know who would even be able to run this across the goal line. Um, so if you know anybody to pitch it to, or if you want to pass it on to somebody, make this thing go viral, maybe if enough of us push for this, it could actually be a reality. So enough of me yakking. Let me go ahead and present my model that I believe would actually work. So first, keep the current healthcare system exactly as it is, okay? No changes. Let the whole thing do its thing. People that are happy with it, their choices, all of that, fine. What we're going to look at is basically how do you create a parallel system? Because right now, the attempts are to try to uh, meld these systems together, you know, or to use the services of a current system in a government healthcare kind of way. Of course, you have things like VA hospitals and things for military, and, and I'm not even talking about that. Those can continue to stand. Um, but let me go ahead and tell you my background, and that will tie into what I believe this model uh, to be, okay? So first of all, I'm a surgical nurse. I have been in medicine since 1989. I have been a surgical nurse since 1994. I've invented surgical equipment and all kinds of things. I've been in pretty much the Western healthcare side of things. Uh, on a professional side, uh, personally, I've started several businesses. Um, uh, educationally, um, have background in plant sciences. Of course, our business, Table Rock Tea Company, we work with all kinds of herbal stuff. So I also deal with people on the holistic side of things. And no, this is actually not where I'm going with that. I'm not going into holistic medicine. Um, talking about an alternative healthcare system. So, uh, my career, I started out uh, working for a few years at a uh, general hospital up in Pennsylvania. I then moved down to South Carolina where I worked for Shriners Hospital for children. And then after that, I uh, have worked the last part of my career uh, back in general surgery again. Okay, so I've kind of seen a little bit of different models play out. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with something called an HSA. It's a health savings account. So a health savings account essentially is something that your employer can do if they've got um, a, a group insurance policy, they can also offer this HSA. And it's essentially uh, a pre-tax contribution into this account, okay? That account then can only be used for medical expenses. So it's basically put there to have people save up for medical expenses. That could be anything from medications to surgeries to, you know, uh, physical therapy, whatever. Whatever would qualify as medical. I believe you can either, uh, you can even wind that out to dental and um, optical, things like that. So health-related expenses go into this HSA. So it's a pre-tax contribution. You actually have a card and it 
functions just like a credit card or a debit card, I guess more like a debit card. Um, so that account, that card's tied to your account. So like if I were to say have a doctor's visit and I go ahead and do the, you know, copay and, you know, swipe it or chiropractor visit, whatever, that gets taken off, taken out of my HSA account. Now here's the problem with an HSA account. Um, HSA is a bank, okay? It's the health savings account, HSA bank. Okay, so think of it as any other bank. The way banks work is they get your money and then they go and they use your money to make more money for themselves. That's how that works. So they, you know, invest it and they do business with it. And you're essentially giving the bank a loan that they're then playing with. And in exchange, you get to keep your money there. Um, the problem with an HSA, though, is that not everyone can initiate an HSA. Not every business can offer an HSA. You have to have an insurance. You have to be a carrying uh, insurance. You have to carry an insurance policy, I believe. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Of course, make any comments you want. Uh, so anyway, so that's kind of prohibited. So in other words, somebody couldn't say, well, hey, that'd be great to just have uh, an HSA option. You also have to carry an insurance policy. So Here's my proposal as far as funding goes. Um, we can make something that basically is a government HSA, so it's a bank, it's gonna do business with the money that's, that's in, but anyone from an individual to a business or whatever can open up an HSA account. Okay, again, that money can only be used for, for uh, health expenses. But that would make it so that somebody like me, a small employer, if I couldn't afford an insurance policy for my employees, at least what I could do is say, hey, I can at least make contributions into your HSA, right? So that at least we are chipping in for healthcare services. All right, so that's, that's that side of things. Now, when I worked at Shriners Hospital, um, one of the things I worked in Shriners during their golden days, I would say, and at that time, Shriners Hospital ran 22 hospitals. Um, each of them had budgets of upwards of $10 million a year at the time. I believe Shriners had an endowment of $9 billion, billion with a B-B-B, -B when, when billions mattered. Um, and they ran and staffed and paid for all 22 of those hospitals using only the interest from that endowment. They never touched the principal. So this big pool of money, they had hospitals all over the country. You could do the same thing, funding it through the HSA. So, and it'd be much larger than that Shriners Endowment ever was. So there's your money source, okay? So if you think about that, um, all those people, all the individuals, the businesses, putting money into this giant HSA bank, right? you'd probably be talking into the hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars. Um, so think of how many actual facilities, medical facilities you could build and staff with that. Okay. So there's the funding side. All right. What about the staffing side, right? Again, this is a parallel system. So you have your regular healthcare system going and then this whole one that's built by a HSA funded system. Staffing wise, well, when I was in school, I was actually looking to become a general surgeon. And one of the main things that kept me from doing that was the cost of school. Well, there were some programs that were available to me um, and they kind of went like this. Uh, the government would pay for my schooling and I would then owe them X amount of years in an underserved population. So whether it's like, a Native American reserve or up in Alaska in some little town or, you know, basically an underserved place that the government put me to, um, to pay off those student loans. Okay. So that is how you could staff those facilities. There are plenty of people that would absolutely be fine saying, all right, you pay for my school. I come out debt free. I owe you four years at one of these HSA hospitals. Okay, and that's for everything, you know, from, from surgeons to radiology to CNA to whatever it would be, right? 
So you could do that. And then those facilities would be staffed. So you'd actually um, be able to do, kind of do the whole thing. And like I said, I've never heard that system pitched before, you know, as a parallel system. Usually when you talk about it, they say, well, how are you gonna fund it? How are you gonna staff it? Well, I just funded it and I just staffed it. So that's essentially, I believe, a good step forward in possibly addressing our nation's healthcare uh, system issue. So I would love to hear your comments, blow it up. Um, you know, um, and like I said, if you think it's valid, pass this video along, share it. Um, I think it would be fantastic uh, if we saw something like that. I'm all for it. People then still have their choice, but those of us who say, hey, you know, we can't afford all these crazy insurance rates and everything like that, we've got this whole other system that's funded and staffed. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to see what else is brewing here at Table Rock Tea Company.